to me. Floor is yours. Okay, so um, good morning and good afternoon. Um, I'm going to present you my master thesis. Um, it's uh, in part of the in a portion fulfillment of the requirements of the degree of master's in system and computing engineering. Uh, the name of the project is Visualizing Taxonomic Reports from Biological Sequence Alignment. And my advisors uh, were Jose Pierre Hernandez and John Guerra, as, as you just said. Uh, okay, so welcome everyone. So the main contributions of this project were uh, two. The first one is uh, a taxonomy of uh, analysis tasks regarding uh, taxonomic profile analysis in considering the state of the art. And BioCycle, a visual analytic tool that uh, is a web-based and open source application that is connected to the MCDI uh, and Unprod API and uh, that aims to help bioinformaticians to summarize and compare um, single and multiple taxonomic reports or sequence alignment results. Um, and it's de designed and tested with a, a real user uh, that is Alejandro here with us. So why is this, uh, why is this problem interesting? Uh, sequence, sequence alignment uh, on no, sequence extraction is a common practice in bioinformatics. In bioinformatics. For, for example, in metagenomics, um, it is, uh, it's a field of a study that analyzes genomic material from environmental um, samples. And out of this sample, sequences of DNA, RNA, or protein are extracted and can be aligned to sequences that are stored in biological databases. Uh, such alignment uh, provide bioinformaticians information about the functional or structural or evolutionary relationships between sequences. And uh, algorithms such as BLAST and Heidenmarkov the markup models are used to make make such alignments. So um, this uh, biologic this sequence alignments produce a myriad of results. And uh, summarizing uh, qu quickly summarizing these results, um, it's a difficult task without any analytic tool that uh, that supports this task. Uh, and what happens with when one sequence is misclassified? Uh, first of all, the sequence is misclassified. And second of all, the widespread of misclassifications is uh, very huge because this misclassif misclassified sequence is going to be used to align to future uh, unknown sequences. And uh, it would be, uh, the, the erroneous data would be widespread. So, um, first, uh, I'm going to present what are the usual results out of uh, biological, biological sequence alignment. Um, when we have an unclassified sequence and we compare it to a sequence stored in the database, we have three different results. The first one are the, uh, the, the, the sequence um, comparisons that uh, and the regions of similarity between these two sequences. And the second one, um, the sequences stored in, a, in the database can be assigned to a species. And uh, so we can obtain the, the taxonomy of this species. So we obtain the taxonomy of the sequence uh, stored in the, in the database. And at last, uh, we have the sequence description that briefly uh, summarizes what the sequence is about. So when we compare one unknown sequence to the uh, thousands of, of uh, sequences that are stored in the database, we have multiple 
regions of similarities, multiple taxonomies, and multiple sequence of description, as well as a score of similarity of our unknown sequence um, with the sequences stored in the database. So, considering this, um, this result, different result that I'm just considering some requests of the of the user that my information requirement, we identified two different analysis tasks or type of analysis tasks. The first one is when we have one unknown sequence and we would like to classify it. And the second one is when we have multiple sequences and we would like to identify the similarities between them. Uh, Considering this analysis tasks and the three different result sets, we end up having uh, six different analysis tasks. And uh, this is the, uh, this is our some reviewed um, implementations, uh, state of the art implementations, um, classified depending on the analysis tasks they, they support and the result sets they consider. We are going to focus our um, we are going to focus in the analysis task two number two number two a and number two b um, uh, so uh, this is the these are the the state of the art implementations for such for such um, analysis task uh, there are two main um, approaches the first one uh, so when we have a uh, uh, as, uh, the, when we have uh, the result set of a uh, sequence alignment in uh, in taxonomic profile, we have multiple taxonomies. If we group group them all, we end up having a tree that is a subtree of the phylogenetic tree. So uh, this is the data set we are we are considering. Um, the two approaches are the first one. Um, when only one rank is considered, let's say uh, the family, so the bioinformatician has to uh, identify which rank is the one of his interest, and the, and the information is visualized in traditional graphs. graphs. Uh, the second approach considers the entire tree visualization. And there are three different types identified in the, in the, in the Current in implementations uh, reviewed. One is node link diagrams, the second one is outlines, and the third one is radial spatial feeling. So, um, for the unique rank, uh, the positive point is we have detailed information because uh, we are um, presenting only a subset of the entire results. We are not considering the entire tree, but we are considering uh, a subset of the results by filtering the by rank. Uh, however, we don't have an overview of the entire result. Uh, the, the second approach is the tree representation. For all of them, we have an overview. However, for the node diagram, we don't have a, a score representation. So remember each, each uh, Sequence has a score of similarity, so here we can we, we don't have a score uh, a score representation, or it is um, it can be accessed accessed only by demand, only if the user uh, clicks in a specific link or or not, and it's also hard to read notes because we have multiple notes. Um, the second one, the the outline, uh, we have readable nodes because they are all aligned to, to the horizontal axis, but we again have no score representation. The radial spatial uh, feeling uh, has a score representation because it uses the area of each um, of each node to represent the score. Um, and it's uh, efficient in the space feeling. Uh, However, it's also hard to read notes because they are not aligned to the horizontal axis. So we present BioCycle. Uh, as I told you, a web-based and open source application 
that visualizes multiple and single and multiple uh, taxonomic profiles out of a sequence alignment. And that supports different uh, or usual input formats, such as uh, connecting, connecting with the NCBI and Micron APIs. It's possible to uh, convert sequences using the accession ID or PASA formats, that are the usual formats for sequences. Or it is possible to upload regenerated comparisons. So the implementation and the backend is done entirely with Python, um, and the, it is connected to the NCBI API and the Unicode databases um, to get the comparisons and to uh, build the taxonomies for each of the sequences. Um, the front end is built in JavaScript, uh, relying in a, in a web based application. And uh, say, considering the interactivity it can provide. And we also have a, a non, non relational uh, database, a mobile database that uh, stores the, the trees that are generated and the comparisons. Uh, to um, provide a faster retrieval when the user is uh, querying over a, um, a already generated result. So uh, visual design. Uh, so for the taxonomic for the taxonomic representation, we mapped the stored sequences uh, in the biological databases to a specific species. So each sequence had a, um, a unique taxonomy. After grouping the entire assigned taxonomies, we end up having a tree, as I, as I told you, the, uh, a subtree of the phylogenetic tree. And with um, each of the leaves, each leaf of the tree is one species, uh, and each species has a score value for a, for a, for a sequence alignment result. Uh, this score value is assigned as the maximum uh, score of the sequence that has that is assigned to such a species. Um, so we end up having a species. Uh, our 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 data set is um, consists in a species that have two variables. The first one, the score value. That is, as I told you, the maximum score for sequences assigned to such a, to that species, and the ranks that are the see, we consider six uh, um, six ranks: a phylum, class, order, family, genus, and the species. Uh, considering these two variables, um, and uh, considering the visual analytic frameworks proposed by Tamara Munzner, uh, we decided. First, to represent the ranks as a, uh, the ranks being a, category, a categorical variable, we um, represent them as uh, using the spatial region. And the score value being a numeric uh, variable, uh, it's going to be uh, represented uh, using the, the length. So uh, we didn't use the first, the first proposed by the framework position on common or an, on, or an aligned scale, but the second one, um, and we end up having an IC comma, an IC comma. This is the one you can see in, in the right, in the right. Uh, so this IC code has a, a score representation, an overview of the entire result, and it has readable notes uh, because all of the labels are um, aligned to the horizontal axis, and it has details on demand. So it's an uh, interactive icicle. Uh, there is one, one thing, it is less efficient space feeling than, than, than Krona, but uh, we, we, we have readable notes that uh, Krona has uh, problems. So um, for providing or supporting analysis that 
and to be that is um, having multiple and unclassified sequences comparisons uh, we provided more use than the IC code so uh, we would have one IC code for each of the sequences that are unclassified or unknown sequences and um, we have a dendrogram and dendrogram tree uh, I score threshold and as a view of a small world sequence. Uh, this gives us an overview of the entire result set. Uh, also gives us independent visualizations for each result. And um, it has uh, some problems in uh, because it highly relies in user's memory and uh, it didn't have details and demands. But considering the the, the different views, we could uh, tackle this problem. So uh, I'm going to explain, explain each of the views uh, briefly. The first one, the IC code iteration. So uh, in this case, uh, as I told you, we have an IC code for each of the sequences that were aligned. Um, in the iteration, the nodes are sort descending by score value. So always the first the first lead is the one is the species with the highest score. Uh, also, the node's position is preserved as possible. Uh, the node the, the node's color is also preserved. The children notes share the same tone as the parent, uh, but they have different saturation. Uh, and the labels increase size when being on focus. Um, we have also a view that is the small multiple. So uh, we have, uh, as the as the code is iterating over the entire result set, we have uh, a, a view of the small multiples that lets us uh, let us uh, understand and or gives us an overview of the of the entire result. However, uh, considering uh, rendering limitations, uh, only when the when less than 500 results are presented, this view is activated. So if the result set is bigger than 500, the user would have to filter first the, the result set in order to activate this view. And these are also interacted as well with the icicle. If if you select one small multiple, you can. Um, you can see in detail one of one icicle. And you can stop the, the iteration and, and see in detail one icicle. Uh, so the dendrogram. The dendrogram is um, the grouping of the entire taxonomies of the sequences stored in the database with which each sequence was compared with. So um, it is evident that, uh, that after or having multiple sequences, this this tree would be uh, would have a lot of leaves. For that reason, this tree is done as a as a collapsible tree, and the user can expand or or collapse the nodes that he would like to, um, considering there is its interest. Um, also. The nodes in the dendrogram are sort uh, descending by the amount of nodes, um, no, by the amount of organisms with which such node in their, in, with, that has such node in the taxonomy. So, um, as we mapped the the sequences in the database to or to to a species, sorry, not organisms, but species. As we mapped these um, sequences to a species, um, this dendrogram is sorted by the by the amount of species in the in the in the, in the database database that has this node in their section. Uh, also, the labels increase size when being hovered. Uh, at last, we have a, a scored threshold. Uh, so, considering that each result uh, so the score values are not 
are not um, standardized. So um, a normalization of this score is of this score threshold is that uh, the score threshold depends uh, entirely in the maximum number of uh, in the in the maximum score value of, of each result. So let's say if if one result for one result the maximum score value was of 300 and we filter we we set the score threshold to 50 percent then only the leaves that have more than 150 will be displayed. Um, so uh, this is a, a case study we made to test the, the application. Um, the data set is a data set of 23,000 of different sequences that were generated after sequencing the, the genomic marker 16S over a sample. Considering time limitations, uh, this, um, this case study only considers 179 of and so the objective of this um, of this uh, case study is to understand what is the diversity of the sample uh, and which of the sequences could be identified and what are the similarities between the sequences. So this is the overview of the result. Um, this is the, the, the overview of biocycle in general. We have the small multiples for the 179 small uh, results, uh, the iteration of the, over the icicle in the right, and in the left, the dendrogram uh, summarizing the entire taxonomy. The overview of the, of the small multiples in this case, in this scenario, um, is is presented here. Here we can see that most of the of the results, uh, or in the results, the purple, yellow, and orange tones are uh, prevail in the entire in the entire result. Uh, so this uh, lead us to 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 conclude that uh, mostly the purple the purple um, tones. Are the ones that are having the greatest scores. <laughs> so, however, we are going to considering the the dendrogram sort. We see uh, that the class that had um, that had more sequences uh, compared with sequences in this taxon, in this or regarding Proteobacteria, regarding this class is Proteobacteria. So proteobacteria had 175 uh, sequences compared with uh, out of 179. And the two orders that had more uh, sequences compared with were gamma proteobacteria and alpha proteobacteria. Also, the, the class bacteroidetes had uh, a huge amount of, of results and in a specific the order bacteria. So we are going to the, it was the, the results were filtered um, considering these this, um, these classes and orders. So the first one uh, filtering by the class proteobacteria uh, 170, 125 sequences remain so 68 percent of the of the result set. And we still see how we have purple, yellows, and orange. However, if we keep filtering uh, and we filter by gamma proteobacteria, uh, we we still have fifty percent of the data set, and they are all purples. The purple is denoted by the class, and the class is gamma proteobacteria. This means that uh, all the purples in the in or the, all the purples you see in the in the result set uh, belong to, to belong to gamma proteobacteria. Filtering by alpha proteobacteria, we can see we preserve the yellows. So the class the, the ones uh, having yellow in in the icicle are uh, are results which pass alpha proteobacteria. 
with scores, with scores having uh, big values in uh, sequences that are assigned to species that are belong to a drop of bacteria. Um, if we filter by flower bacteria, flower bacteria, we have 22, 22 out of the 179 sequences, and they are all um, <coughs> so the the orange results are belonging to classes flower flower bacteria. So in conclusion, uh, we can quickly say that out of these 179 species, there are um, a big amount of results that had high scores with uh, sequences that belong to organisms that uh, belong to uh, the class gram gram of the bacteria. Um, also, uh, there were some results that had high scores uh, for classes alpha, uh, uh, for orders alpha, pro, alpha protobacteria and delta protobacteria, and some of them double bacteria. So in conclusion, uh, we presented a taxonomy of different analytic tasks, uh, considering the state of the art implementations and the commercial tools. Uh, we also present a visualization that summarizes and covers taxonomic profiles uh, and follows good practices of visual design, and uh, which is also a web, a web based and open source prototype uh, connected with the NTBI and Unicrot API. In future work, uh, we, we have a um, proposal to tackle uh, analysis task three that uh, consists in a result set of sequence description because there is there has not, uh, not nothing has been implemented yet. Uh, and we propose uh, methods, methods used in text analysis, feature collection and data mining that uh, could ease the sequence description <laughs> out of the uh, sequence alignment. Uh, I'm going to show you a video. We present BioCycle, a tool for visualized taxonomic reports out of biological sequence comparisons. BioCycle aims to help bioinformaticians understanding taxonomic relationships between organisms by tapping two different analysis We present BioCycle, the first tool for visualized taxonomic, taxonomic reports out of biological out of sequence query alignments. And the second one, one, compare taxonomic reports out of multiple query alignments. I am first presenting you a single query taxonomic report for a protein sequence comparison. In this case, we are using the protein accession ID to generate the sequence alignments. However, it is also possible to upload a pre-generated comparison result in their usual format. The sequence we are going to compare is taken from a rat. <laughs> the results are shown in a tree visualization, where each leaf represents an organism with which the sequence of the rat was compared. In the right side, you can see an icicle. Each leaf height is calculated considering the maximum score value for the sequences belonging to such organism, and their parent's height is calculated as the sum of the children. It is possible to filter the icicle leaves by using a score threshold. This threshold depends on the result's highest score. For example, if the highest score is 300 and the score threshold is set to 50%, only the leaves with a score greater or equal than 150 will remain. In this case, the highest score is set by the organism Ratus norvegicus. The second greatest score is, by, is set by the organism Mus Musculus, which obtained only 42% of the rat's score. The second analysis task aims to support similarity detection for multiple comparison results. In this case, we are going to present a case study consisting of a set of 179 sequences. These sequences were obtained by sequencing a genetic marker, the 16S, over a single sample. The visualization consists in three main views. 
an icicle iteration to the right, a dendrogram to the left, and a set of small multiples on top. The iteration goes through the entire set of results. The small multiples present the taxonomic profiles for each of the results. And the dendrogram shows the taxonomic grouping of the sequences with which the data set was compared. Considering the amount of nodes it can have, it is presented as a collapsible tree that dynamically expands its nodes according to the number of visible children. The nodes in the dendrogram are sorted following the number of results containing sequences with such node in their taxonomy. It is possible to see that there is a diverse distribution of taxonomies over the sample. However, yellow, purple, and orange tones prevail in the general side. If we filter by the most common order, gamma proteobacteria in this case, we can see that 88 out of the 179 results are still remaining. Also, most of the results present purple tones over the entire tree, which leads to conclude that a great amount of sequences with high scores in the remaining 88 results belong to such order. After repeating the filtering process with the next two most common orders, alpha proteobacteria and delta proteobacteria, it is possible to see a similar behavior as with the gamma proteobacteria. The remaining results for both filters have common tones between them. Yellow for alpha proteobacteria and green for delta proteobacteria. As a result, with this simple process, it is possible to conclude that out of this data set of 179 sequences, a considerable amount of results have significant scores with organisms belonging to the order gamma proteobacteria. Also, some of them have similarities with organisms belonging to alpha proteobacteria and delta proteobacteria. BioCycle is a tool that aims to support bioinformaticians in taxonomic report analysis using straightforward visualizations. We present BioCycle. So, thank you very much. Okay. Welcome first questions from the audience and the viewers. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, can you ask a Yes. Please. Okay. Thank you, Mary Lee. It was very interesting. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess more than questions, I, I have some comments in general. So in particular for the, in the presentation, um, it was a lot more clear than what you get from the document. In particular, when we were, um, in particular, the document will not allow to see a lot of the details of the features, and and even even though I have tried the the application a couple of times, there were some features only in this presentation I realized that that it had I I, I didn't find them before, so that was that was very good out of the presentation. Also, um, I I know it's a work in progress. There's some adjustments that need to be done. But in general, I, I'm not a computer scientist. I am a user more than a computer scientist. So I think it's, it's very interesting. And it has some features that uh, besides I haven't seen in other programs that probably were not completely highlighted. I think 
one of the important features here is that you have the opportunity to see the each sequence, like the breadth of different results for each sequence, and then all the, the comparison between different sequences, which is something that I haven't seen in any other tool. And it's something, and that was precisely the something I like to see, because with some of the other tools available, when you just compare a sequence, it either takes the fair result or applies some, some algorithm to pick one assignment or one taxonomy, and that's what it will show to you. But you will never have the opportunity to filter those results yourself or to, uh, yeah, to filter those. I still think that we need to make adjustments to how the, the filtration is done. I am not convinced about how they're filtered right now. Uh, there may be some <coughs> other useful features. And also, uh, making it a little more user-friendly, it will <coughs> imply some extra buttons there so you can adjust some other parameters. But I think those are details uh, to make it nicer. Uh, but I think it was, I know I was conscious of the process, uh, and I do think was a little, like a lot of the results happen at the very end. The very last time. Uh, it will have been nicer to have a <laughs> little more time to, to get the results and process the results and everything. But I think it's, it's very interesting and, and, and promising because I think there will be very useful information. Uh, I guess um, a task right now, and I know you're not a bioinformatician. I know for you, uh, an organism and a taxon and what a phyla is or a family mm -hmm. is, you had no idea about that like a few months ago. Uh, so I'm not expecting you to know that. But in the moment that you want to make that useful for other people or make a manuscript about that, it will be very important to be accompanied by somebody that will have that information. I think as well there are some inaccuracies in the document, precisely in the, in the search of tools that you use, uh, like when you look at the state of the art. Um, I think there are some programs that are misclassed, like the place where you put those in, in the in your six type of tasks. Yes. They may be misclassified. I think, uh, and if you want that, something that we can discuss at some other point, like uh, <coughs> like you have metaflan in one set and and then Girast in another set, and and those and Cron in another set, and those have big overlaps in what they do. So I I don't really think that they will go in different sets. Um, that's something that should be fixed, and, and some precisions in the language, in particular for biologists, uh, may be needed at some point. But yeah, in general, I think uh, one of the questions I had, since I haven't asked any questions, <laughs> is, is the scalability. I, I did send you uh, a 3,000 sequence. I know it's a lot of sequences, but it's not unreasonable. In, in the terms of what you can get nowadays. Actually, uh, being, as I said, that was one sample, and for one sample, that's okay, but sometimes you have studies with hundreds of samples, so you'll be talking about it in the order of millions or thousands of millions of sequences. Will this be able to scale in that way, or, or what will you be your choice? Uh, when somebody comes to you and has millions of sequences. Okay, okay. thank you very much for all your comments. Uh, thank you for uh, the uh, feedback in the document. Uh, try talking closer to the mic because now we are not using the speakers. So. Okay, no, no, I was just saying, uh, thanking Alejandro for his comments and his feedback about the document. Um, and uh, yeah, considering the, the question, I think the most important part is uh, generating the, the comparisons and uh, building up the taxonomies. So as you know, because you have been dealing with uh, sequence alignment, uh, it takes too long 
to generate the comparisons. And that's why I couldn't present the entire data set. But regarding the, the, the visualization tool, uh, it is possible. Uh, considering a set of, of limitations as the one I mentioned of the small multiples. Um, but regarding the, visualiza the visualization, it is, it is possible to, to um, considering a set of results as the one you sent me. Uh, having already generating the, generated the, the sequence alignments. Mm -hmm. and yeah, the, that one option is to do the comparisons off site of server and then just upload the comparison files <coughs> just for yes. visualization. Yes. Uh, right now, it is only possible to upload one file. So that would be a future work in which uh, it, it, it should be possible to upload uh, multiple uh, files at once. Um, or even a concatenated file for the results. It could be just one file, but just concatenated. You you have like uh, like sequence delimiter, like you know what the results for each sequence is yeah. because of headers, and then you can have a lot of them concatenated. Yeah, if if that's if that's easy for you, I think uh, in this in this solution we should be uh, working together. So uh, we can uh, you can. Uh, Tell me how is it uh, easy for for you, and how are the usual tools um, uh, delivering the results? And considering that, then then the implementation should be not not mm -hmm. too long, not too difficult. Yeah, right now I see it. I see myself using it in <coughs> like special cases, like for standard cases. There's applications that handle massive amount of sequences so it'll give me a, a good enough visualization but every once in a while I get some a bunch of sequences not very many that just are problematic and I cannot get a good accuracy of classification and those usually ranges in the number of hundreds or few thousands so maybe this will be very useful for those problematic cases that you can go and check them almost by hand without really having the problem of checking the hand because you, you have a visual uh, application for that. I think in that sense, it will be useful. Um, so you mentioned that right now you're storing the results that you upload there in, in the memory. Is that a permanent storage or how, how have you thought about that storage? Uh, no, it's, it's more thought like a cache. Okay. Uh, so if uh, the user is currently, uh, it's currently no, but um, going uh, too often for a same result, uh, so uh, the st the results are stored for a while in the in the database. Can you define a while? Sorry. Can you define a while? It means hours, days, months. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, one week, same as the as the proposed by the NCBI. Uh, when yeah, I think results. once once you get a lot of people using it, and especially they begin uploading a lot of data, even in storing for a week, it could mean gigabases of storage. So, I guess that's uh, also work in progress, depending on usage <laughs> and amount of data and people using it you have to restructure how much is a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to leave so, so Jorge can also ask some questions. Sure. Um, okay. Oh, please. Okay, um, well, thanks for my link for your talk. Um, yeah, I think I thought a lot about it. I talked to you yesterday, I talked to, to the editor Alejandro as well, for. so I think there is no, Basically, too much pointing in um, making our basically questions round. Uh, question round. Basically, because of the I have to say that my evaluation, both as a research activity and as a, even as a demo of a software product. Are, are you hearing correctly? Are you hearing right? Uh, could you speak a little bit uh, louder, please? Sure. <clears throat> Sorry. So, uh, I was saying that 
I feel that there is not too much point on making a, a questions round because unfortunately I have to say that both as a research activity and as the development of doing a demo of a software product, my evaluation unfortunately is, is negative. Um, I'll tell you basically the four main points, uh, the four main concerns that I have. Okay. Uh, and the first one is basically something that, that I give as an advice to everybody who is uh, software engineering is hoping to, to, to build a product that will be useful for users. The first thing, in my opinion, okay, everything that I'm gonna say is basically my opinion and it's perfectly up to the debate. Um, the first task, in my opinion, if you really want to make a software product that is gonna be useful for a X number of group of users, is to learn and to get familiar with the concepts behind the product that you are building. So yeah. uh, in this case, in the particular case of this uh, of this work, it was very important for me and you will, you, will, you will be able to do much better if you will know basically the concepts that are related to, to the work, the concept of species, family, the concept of the concept of phylogeny, even a little bit of concept of evolution will be really good for you to really understand what is the what is the goal of the work. Uh, and what is the basically the, the, the analysis task that uh, informaticians usually do with this with this data? Uh, basically, like, uh, that that reflected in the document. So, in, um, so basically, this is the main, in my opinion, this is the main reason to, for the other issues that you have in the in the rest of the of the, of the activity. So the second problem is basically the literature review. So one of the important uh, one of the most important aspects of a research project is um, to be able to select the review, to select and review in depth the literature that you need and is relevant for the for the work that you are doing. And basically, this is not the case. Uh, you basically mentioned, and as Alejandro said, you mentioned a lot of the a lot of different tools that do cover a very wide range of use cases. Uh, you actually present. Uh, something that you call taxonomy of, of tools as a, as a result. And basically, if you, if you really would like to make a, like a summary of every tool that makes sequence alignment, you are missing, that deals with sequences, you are missing a lot of different tools. And what really should happen in this case is that you will limit, one, one more time, it will be um, like, uh, it will be much better if you will from the beginning define exactly the scope and the exact requirements that you would like to, to address and make the comparison and focus the comparisons on the tools that are related to that particular goal, which I will guess in this case, and as it turns out to be, uh, your work end up being trying to build a, a, a tool to, uh, to make visualization of, of metagenomic um, uh, uh, experiments. Uh, and then it will, if, if that was, if that will be clear from the beginning, you will be you will uh, focus your literature review, and you will be much more effective selecting the the, 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 the tools and, and, and making a more in-depth comparison of, of the tools that were relevant and were related to, to to your work. On the other hand, you are missing something very important from literature review. So, in, in many parts of your document, you mention the that you that you will be different from the others in the sense that you will apply basic concepts or or, or concepts of, uh, of, of visualization, of data visualization. And then if, for example, as myself, if I'm not familiar with these concepts and these, with these good practices, and I would like to learn from your, from your thesis, there is nowhere in your thesis where you describe what, what, what is what you are calling um, good visualization practices. Uh, so for example, something like a brief description and a brief state of the art, and what is in your opinion, Good visualization is missing in your literature review. Uh, the third comment is uh, it's a small comment, but I, I've seen it in many software engineers trying to start with bioinformatics. Uh, in my opinion, many people automatically think that something has to be web based. And in the case of your document, you call restrictive some of the tools just because they are uh, user end, but because they are desktop applications. And if you get familiar with the common work of, of many informaticians, and especially because of the of the of the of the size of the, of the data that we handle every day, you will quickly notice that basically uh, being 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 um, 
being desktop or web doesn't really make a difference. Uh, that in, in many cases, it doesn't really make a difference. And in the case of web development, it's actually a problem if you actually want to set this into production for the reasons that, that Alejandra mentioned. So you don't have, um, so basically you will have to think on where your application will live, on how will you store all these data sets, for how long, which is the infrastructure that is supporting, that, that you will have to support in, in behind it, let's call it backend, uh, that you need to actually support that and to, have, to actually have the service uh, like for many users. Finally, the testing. So um, uh, again, if you, uh, I mean, the testing is clear that you didn't really try any real data set, um, which is very important, again, to, get, to, to have a sense of which, um, uh, to have a sense of what your users will do. Uh, in this case, uh, Alejandro sent you something that is kind of like less than 10% of a real data set, and you no, oh, you just not okay. Good, but you could only analyze like one percent of that of that data set. But I was saying ten percent because in a normal MySQL experiment, with sixteen eggs you get something in the in the order of a million sequences. But okay. that would be for multiple samples. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, the, um, but even in this case, you could only analyze. I mean, your your software could only analyze like. 1% of, of the tool and with human intervention, right? So for example, even, even as a demo, I try to use it. I, ah, you, you mentioned in your document that you use common formats or the important formats. And then I try to do something as simple as uploading one, one pasta with a DNA sequence of one gene uh, of, a, of one species that I work with. And um, it was not possible. And even following the recommendation that you have, um, it was not possible. So if you do that with a demo of a software that you really want to sell, that will basically uh, that will basically be very bad for for the users that you want to to if you would like actually to 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 sell any kind of software to users. That kind of experience definitely will be will maybe the best to to talk about the product. Yeah, we'll stop here because we have the room. Or? Yes. Yes. Ah. Unfortunately, I have the room. I will be happy to keep discussing. I don't know if you want to mention something. Um, it's very important to, to have your final comments in order to advance the, the, the documents and the, for example, if you know, We can't hear. To fix this kind of, uh, to fix this kind of, uh, of issues. No, uh, what you propose? Can we continue somewhere else? Or? If if you have uh, some time, we can go. We we are not too much. We can continue if you want. Yep. Maybe in in my office. Maybe it's five. Uh, maybe we can do a break of five minutes in order to to move us to my office. Okay. <laughs> Because I have a meeting. Now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> of course, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with that, uh, I guess in order to have more, more the most uh, information quality that we can, in order to enhance the, the, the final presentation. And then, is there a discussion like afterwards, or evaluation, or what? Uh, yes. What? Yes. Yes. We, we, but uh, so with that let me finish the stream so we can continue the discussion thank you very much for attending in our interesting community but uh